This show is brought to you by Boricua Beer. I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother? Her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll-free 866-341-1425. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. Call now or visit HispanicAchievers.org. Welcome back to Hispanic Speak Out. We're seeing every Tuesday at 9 p.m. here on Bright House. My name is William Garlington, and I'm here today to speak to the current Dep Chief Deputy of Seminole County who is seeking to be our next uh, Sheriff of Seminole County. Is that correct? His name is Dennis Lima. That, that is correct. Thank you, William. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Lima, you currently are in the Department of Seminole County. Um, explain to us what you do currently in your position. I, w I would love to. Uh, I've been employed with the Seminole County Sheriff's Office for the past uh, 23 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the day of the election, I'll be uh, 24 years with the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, where I currently serve as the Chief Operating Officer. And essentially have ascended through the ranks, starting as a, a correctional officer, and uh, uh, spent time as a sergeant, lieutenant, captain, major. And the day-to-day -day operations of the Sheriff's Office has been my responsibility for the past uh, three years. Uh, uh, quite frankly, I'm, I'm Sheriff Esslinger, who is uh, retiring at the end of this term. I'm his right-hand man in that position. Okay. So the election is next August? Uh, the primary election uh, uh, is, is next August, and there will be a general election, if needed, in November. Because right now, if, if, if I'm not to be corrected, you're running unopposed. Is that correct? That, that is correct. I, okay. I've, uh, I've received endorsement and support from almost every elected official in Seminole County. And uh, right now we're unopposed and, and uh, uh, really makes us feel, feel great. But you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So we're going you know, to run a full campaign and we're going to do everything we can do to uh, continue to provide an enhanced level of services to the citizens of Seminole County. Okay, speaking of that, what are some of the goals that you anticipate as being sheriff come next year? Well, well quite frankly, I, I'm in a very fortunate position because I can run on our record. Mm -hmm. uh, Seminole County Sheriff's Office is experiencing an all-time low in reported crime. To give you, give you some numbers as an example, take 40 years. Uh, in the past 40 years, the population in Seminole County has increased by over 200%, uh, but the crime rate has decreased by 73%. Wow. Now, if you look at the crime rate reduction, that is per capita. Uh, but let's talk numbers to numbers. Mm -hmm. In the past 40 years, there's been a 17% decrease in the volume of crime that occurred. And if you think about all the technology advances over that same time, uh, it's pretty remarkable. But, but to take it a more specific uh, time frame, the past 20 years, uh, the same numbers for the past 20 years is the population has increased in Seminole County by 33%. Uh, of course, over the past 20 years, uh, the addition of World Wide Web and, and additional opportunities for, for bad guys to victimize people, there's still been a 63% reduction in, in reported crime and then an overall reduction in the volume of crime as well. So we're extremely proud of that. Uh, to give it a comparison, our crime rate uh, through the state of Florida is at an all-time low, and that is about 3,400 incidents per every 100,000 people. To give it in comparison, it is 1,600 uh, in Seminole County, and that's lower than any contiguous uh, okay. unincorporated county. Well, you, you've seen the news. You've seen what's been going on, ex especially with police officers, uh, Ferguson, Chicago, you know. Um, why has your department been so good or excelling from the numbers of decreasing the crime as per capita has gone up? 
I, I have to tell you, it has to be our style of policing. Okay. Uh, we, we strongly uh, subscribe to a community policing style philosophy. Um, for the past two decades, uh, at least two decades, we, we you know, assume the responsibility to foster relationships with law-abiding citizens, faith-based community, uh, other business organizations before we actually needed those relationships. And if you look at, you know, dating back to the, the trial uh, with, with Zimmerman and, right. and the shooting of Trayvon Martin, not one incident uh, occurred in Seminole County or, or specifically right. in Stanford. Right, I don't remember any demonstrations like we've seen at, in other cities. Yeah, and, and that comes together as far as law-abiding community, um, our partners with the municipal police departments because we foster strong working relationships with okay. the professional in all the cities. And I, I think that, uh, you know, when we look at it, we, we strongly feel that the most significant thing that we can do about crime is to prevent it from occurring in the first place. And essentially, it's crime prevention's job to keep enforcement out of business. Absolutely. You know, kind of on the tail end of that, mm -hmm. we, we honestly believe that crime and delinquent behavior is a symptom of a larger problem. And unless we, as a law enforcement agency, are willing to look at, at what those underlining uh, contributing factors that cause criminal activity, we're going to be chasing the rabbit. So, so this is you know, some of the philosophy we do, and we think that we hire the most uh, uh, progressive and innovative thinkers in order to carry out that mission. Do you have, does the Sheriff's Department uh, work close in conjunction with the, the politicians within the community, the, the county commissioners? Are they kind of, you know, helping you guys out there and in, in, in reducing some of this uh, crime because it, it seems like other right. politicians have their own agenda well, I, I, and, 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 and the chief is out there with his police force apologizing uh, on behalf of their police force and it, it, it doesn't seem like they have a working relationship. It seems like you guys have a working relationship in Seminole County. Well, I'll tell you that I don't know that the relationship could be any better than the relationship between elected officials and community leaders in Seminole County and the law enforcement officers and organizations that, that are sworn to provide those services. We really look at this service as a quality of life issue. So our, our efforts are not only to reduce crime. If you think about those crime numbers that I laid out to you already, mm -hmm. those are pretty impressive numbers, but I will sit here and tell you that they're not good enough. Criminologists suggest that a fraction of the crime that occurs in any community is actually reported. And those people that doubt that for one moment can think just for a couple of moments the amount of domestic violence or child neglect and abuse that occur in our communities every single day, yet undetected and unnoticed. Wow. Or the amount of people tonight that will get behind the wheel of a car, mm -hmm. above the legal limit of intoxication, yet never be stopped and never be detected. As a progressive law enforcement agency, in harmony and partnership with our community leaders, whether they're faith-based or elected officials, right. we have to look at these underlining conditions that, that are not simply the numbers, but, but it's, what in, it's in our hearts to do what's right. Okay, so right now you're on a post. Um, if there was a person, because it sounds like to me, you know, it's a no-brainer. You've got crime down. You've worked with some of the sheriffs uh, in the past that have helped. What are some of the negatives, if there are any out there, if there was an opposition to say, vote for me as opposed to Mr. Lima? I mean, is there any? Because it seems as a, as a, as a resident of Seminole County, I want crime down. I don't want the Fergusons and the Chicago. I like this little community. Um, do you see anybody, you know, possibly well, throwing their hat in? I mean, well, you, you I, know I, the I, inner politics of, yeah. of your community. Well, I, I tell you, William, it, it's, you know, we, I, I told you, we, we have almost every elected official endorsement. I've, right. I've got all the city mayors. Uh, most of the police chiefs. I mean, we really are proud of what we do and how we do it. And, and regardless of who comes in the race, you know, we're convinced that the quality of services that we provided mm -hmm. uh, this far, thus far, is only the foundation. You know, the reason why we've remained progressive like we are is anticipating what lingers around the corner tomorrow. And that's what I intend to do, in, in, you know, if I'm elected sheriff. Um, and, and I'm absolutely convinced come, come election day, the citizens of this community of Seminole County are going to get it right. Well, I mean, right now it sounds like you've got it pretty much in the bag. If you could look to the camera and just tell, you know, your voters, the, me, everybody else out there, um, why you would be the, the candidate for oh, Seminole County. Oh, I, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a 23-year I'm a resident of Seminole County. And, and I lead as a father of two small boys 
and a husband of, of a wife who lives in Seminole County. One of the unique things that we've had in Seminole County for many, many years is long-serving elected officials who have the opportunity to build relationships with other community leaders over time that has been a great benefit to us in the past. Um, I know the inner workings of the organization as well as the external land landscape of what needs to occur in order to enhance the quality of life and reduce crime as well as the fear of crime which is equally important when it comes to our, our crime fighting and quality of life uh, strategies. I have uh, led uh, the inside of the organization and I think it's important to mention that when we talk about law enforcement responsibility, sheriffs have a collateral duty to be the chief correctional officer of the county and we have a correctional facility that houses up to 1,000 inmates at any given time and we feel that it's our responsibility to extend beyond care, custody, and control and offer some rehabilitative or more appropriately habilitative services to those citizens and uh, be chief bailiff of the county. So there's a whole list of things that I have uh, the opportunity to bring to the table based upon direct experience. Well, we're out of time, it seems like, and, and I want to thank Hispanic Speak Out. My name is William Garlington. This is Dennis Lima, and we'll be, back. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Lisa Pino. I'm a Latina role model. I am a student at the University of Central Florida, graduating with her communication degree in December. My advice to students is to stay focused, stay dedicated, and don't let challenges bring you down. It is not about the goal, it is about the road. Remember to keep dreaming, live genuinely, and never stop dreaming. Pursue your dreams, but enjoy the moment. This show is brought to you by Boricua Beer. My name is Janice Civeles and I'm a proud Latina role model. Please embrace your uniqueness, be gracious, and everything that you do, do it with courage. You are great and you will do great things. I'm Attorney Yara Rodriguez. I am very proud to be a Latina role model. And for you, my message is never quit, keep at it, and work 24 seven for whatever dream you have because your dream will become a reality. Welcome back, I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you each week on Bright House Channel 49. You know, we always talk politics, and we're gonna introduce a new segment, along with my co-host, uh, Mr. William. William Garlington, I'm on the right side of this new format, and, and my friend Mr. Miranda is on the left side. We're gonna have, we're gonna take different viewpoints and have that discussion each week, so I hope you join us. And also, send in your questions that we can um, expand on and to talk about this. So, William, we're, we're talking about immigration. Yes, sir. What a shocking thing that is, you know, especially to a right-winger as yourself. Okay, so, <laughs> so as, a, as a right-winger, I understand you want to close the border totally. You want to put uh, hand grenades on every child crossing and bazookas on every uh, Texan on that side of the border. Is that right? Pretty close, oh, but, okay. you know, but uh, no, we don't want to do the, the, the second two. We want to do close the borders. Mm -hmm. uh, in my book, It's Your Choice America, Live Free or, uh, I detail immigration on some solutions that right. what we can do. Now, when I wrote this book back in uh, 2014, um, I didn't mention specifically, like some of the politicians have specifically mentioned, and that is build a wall. Right. I don't think that that's a bad idea. You realize it's 700, mile, 700 miles of wall, right? Right, absolutely. Okay, so right. just a small little thing. Right, okay. and I believe that once we take care of the wall uh -huh. in, from uh, California yeah. to Texas and Louisiana, we may want to start looking to to right. uh, close those borders uh, when it comes to Canada and then also the seaboards. Okay. Uh, uh, according to the uh, uh, the American Patriots thing, okay, let me, let me point out to you mm -hmm. that most immigrants that come across the border are actually higher, uh, higher skilled than the workers that we have here uh, that are in the same, same boat. And additionally, okay, they own, they own homes. Additionally, they're not necessarily in poverty. Okay, uh, additionally, they earn uh, slightly more at times, okay, than the citizens, okay, and that they actually don't commit all the crimes that you guys think they do, okay. In fact, they actually wish to work and be citizens and be righteous with everything. However, the system hides them. But let me, let me give you, because you guys like money, let me show you something. If you were allow, okay, those immigrants, those scary immigrants to come across the border, okay, they would, they would help the, the, 
the economic, the economy of the United States by over 600 billion, okay, with a B, dollars, okay? Wait, we're not so, talking about immigration. No. Let, let's be well, clear. Let's, let's, no, let's be clear because yes. you guys want, you guys think these, these guys are coming over here to take your job. No, I'm, okay. not, I'm not talking about immigration. I'm talking about illegal uh, immigration. I'm this talking about country, illegals. Okay, but this whole country, Jose, mm. if you, I'm sure you can agree with me, yeah. was founded on immigration. No, it was, it was actually founded on you guys slaughtering the Indians, but we're not going to go there, okay? <laughs> well, okay, so it, it was we, just you somebody guys, came you, from other, other countries yes. and, and established America. To kill the Indians, okay. yes, that's well, true. Well, I wasn't okay. around. I, I, I feel sorry for that. Uh, okay. But moving forward. So you want to get back your portion of the land? No, no. Okay, just check. Moving forward, okay. over the last 30 years, mm -hmm. the, the illegal immigration has run amok. Okay. Okay? And, and, and we need to get a handle on it. We're not okay. trying to say people can't immigrate. We right. just want them to immigrate legally. True. Okay? And that's and great. Just like they did back in the in the day, they did it legally. What, what day are you talking about? Well, back in the early uh, 19th century, the 18th century. Oh, okay. Okay, these people went through a system, a right. process. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, I'm all for immigration. Right. But we can't have it just open okay. to, you know, other country. Uh, other countries don't do this. Right. Other countries, okay. on the most part, you cannot go into their country right. and just stay there. Totally Even in agree. Mexico. So, so let me. Let me yes. What about what about the guys that are, are, are big time lawyers and doctors and and work for conveniently these big law firms that are able to bypass the system and get citizenships? Is that okay? No. Or should they, it, wait, should they wait? in no, line? No, I don't also? believe anybody should bypass the system. Okay. Okay. We're, I so think America's we're agreed. broke. Broken. America is broke. It's broken. No, not broke, broken. Oh, America's been broken. Okay. It's because of liberalism, uh, which we'll talk about in, in, in another segment, it's, but it's, it's because of the Democrats oh, it's for the and Democrats. Liber ah, liberalism, progressivism. Aren't we glad? Yeah. I'm so glad that you created jails, okay? That it's helping, it's helping the, de the democracy move along. So. Right. So let me ask you, what would you do with the immigrants mm -hmm. immigrant that came over here illegally? Right. They've established... Uh, communities, right. families. Yeah. Now, some of the presidential candidates, right, pres some of the presidential okay. uh, candidates, like Donald Trump, yeah. wants to just round them up and ship them. What do you What do you think about that? I don't think. First of all, I don't think about Donald Trump. Okay. Okay. So let's go beyond that. I think that they should pay a penalty for being here illegally. Okay. Okay. I don't think that we should penalize their children that were born here. I think that we should. Uh, uh, Get behind the DREAM Act because those children deserve to be educated. Okay. And the fact is, most of, most of the people that come across that, whether they're legal or they're immigrants, actually stay in school better and longer than our own children here. Right. Okay. So they're actually a, they actually could be. I know it's hard for you. An example for the rest of us. The Can Asian community that, that immigrated during the Vietnam yeah. War is a perfect example of those people right. coming over, doing it legally, right. or and, well, and no, we helped them. Well, we, we, we did, but they came over them. legally, okay. and but they didn't sneak over, uh -huh. and they've been an asset to this community. No, no we, flew inside, them on, we flew them on the C-130s okay. because we were blowing up their country. Okay, but inside uh -huh. my book, yeah. there is a solution for those families that are here, okay. and it is what you've just said. Right. They pay a fine. Right. They they they're not deported. No. That is ridiculous. It is. Okay, but. But you they, can't deport over 12 million you people. You cannot. But they need to go, they need to pay a fine, even though if they haven't, if they're still paying taxes, right. pay the fine and get in line. Like I said, most of but them But the pay. felons, what do you think about the felons? The felons like no, that. No, they that, tried, this, the, under this, pre, this current presidency, yes, sir. they've deported a great deal, almost 80%. Of, of criminals. Can they get to all of them? No, because our system is... No, but when they come back over, what do you think about those no. folks that keep coming back in, a, after well, we that, deport you them? Know, uh, those crimes are actually in California, and we need to get away from some of those safety Okay, okay, okay. So, we, we agree on that. So okay. we got about two minutes left, and we're going to have some closing arguments from my guy. I'm totally right. My, yeah. my closing comment on illegal immigration is that I'm all for immigration, but when it comes to illegal immigration, we need to uh, close the borders, get a stronghold of what's going on. But those individuals that have committed a felony inside the United States of America who are illegal, they should be deported immediately. Then if they come across the border and they commit another felony, the O'Reilly factor has suggested the bill for Congress, which I support, and that is a mandatory five-year term sentence. 
I believe in that. We need to curtail illegal immigration, especially for those immigrants that are felons. That was nice. I always want to bring up my handkerchief and cry for you guys. I'm telling you, that's really good. Anyway, <laughs> the DREAM Act that I was talking about, this country is founded on a pr very simple principle. All men are created equal. And it was brought to the United States, if you made this shore, you became a citizen, okay? We wanted you here. We wanted to take your, your, the things that brought you here to make positive. We want your doctors, your lawyers, you want your kids, we want to train them. We want to do positive things. We know that kids that are educated here will stay here and create jobs and be part of the process to make America better, beautiful, and greater than it is. And that's what this country is based upon. We have a side that wishes to jail everything that doesn't move, and if it doesn't, if it can move, they want to they want to put money on it. Okay, this is a country that we're not asking for handouts. What we're asking is for a chance, just a chance to be part of it. I'm Jose Miranda, and I'm William Garlington, and this has been Politics. We'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Hi, my name is Lisa Pino. I'm a Latina role model. I am a student at the University of Central Florida, graduating with her communication degree in December. My advice to students is to stay focused, stay dedicated, and don't let challenges bring you down. It is not about the goal, it is about the road. Remember to keep dreaming, live genuinely, and never stop dreaming. Pursue your dreams, but enjoy the moment. This show is brought to you by Boricua Beer. Puerto Ricans are all citizens of the United States, yet some Puerto Ricans are not permitted to vote for president of the United States. A whole lot of them. Right. Well, and they're citizens. So right now, the Constitution says there's only one kind of citizen for the United States, yet Puerto Ricans suffer from being a second-class citizenship because they cannot vote in presidential elections. What will you do to change that? The people of Puerto Rico ought to have the right to say the, what their status is. That should be their, they should have the right of self-determination. And if they, if they vote for um, statehood status, Congress should negotiate with them to make it happen. And so, let me finish. I will. Okay. Um, but that would be the Puerto Ricans' decision. That should be, they, you're correct, you're totally correct. They, there's, um, Puerto Ricans on the mainland are, are full citizens and those on the island aren't. Um, the first step is for Puerto Rico to decide this. Here's another reality check, which is Puerto Rico has a horrific situation economically. And it's hard to imagine without finding some solution to that. $72 billion of debt, huge unemployment, declining population, Central Florida being a prime beneficiary of a lot of new residents that are creating a lot of economic vitality here. But there's a downward spiral in Puerto Rico. And there ought to be some ability for Puerto Rico to change their social contract with extraordinarily high costs and create a high growth scenario that deals with, right now, declining income, eight years in a row of, uh, of a decrease in, in economic activity. It's not sustainable. They ought to have some ability to renegotiate their debt and deal with their social contract. Cities like Detroit have this power. But states don't. And Puerto Rico, in this particular case, is viewed as a state. Until that gets resolved, which it can be, but until that gets resolved, I don't think the status question of, um, of Puerto Rico is going to be front and center in Washington, D.C. But I've been for statehood longer than you've been alive, my friend. <laughs> I have. Were you good? Where were you in 1979? I was doing political campaigns in New York. I was doing them in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Next question. I just want to say to you. Hi, and I'm Altero, and I'm a Latina role model. 
and I want to tell you, cut your excuses in half and face your fears. Fears are, are holding you back to becoming who you are meant to be in this world. Everybody has the potential to become whoever they decide to do. Follow your passion, follow your dream, and you'll be happy always. My name is Raquel Garzon and I'm a Latina role model. My advice to you is to always be yourself, be authentic, and to do always what you believe is the right thing. Hi, my name is Jennifer Cooper and I'm a Latina role model. If you want to do what I did in my life, you want a success for your life, stay focused. Don't stop believing in yourself. Write down your goals and I will see you at the top. My name is Nin Marie Zapata and I am a Latina role model because I believe that you can overcome any circumstances that come in your way and be the best version of yourself. Hello, I'm Sandra Rivera and I'm a Latina role model. Whatever your struggles are in life, whatever you don't have or don't have access to, don't use that as an excuse for not pursuing your dreams and moving forward. Get out of your own way and get out of your comfort zone and you will be amazed at the growth that you will experience. This show is brought to you by Boricua Beer. I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her, and her mother, her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll-free 866-341-1425. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put, Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. Call now or visit hispanicachievers.org. Hi, I'm Gloria Puerta from Feed and Fortify Community Organization today, and Latino role model. And uh, you know, be yourself. Try to have your purpose in life and be a legacy of service. My name is Mila Rivera, and I'm a founder and mentor of Daughters of the Mighty King mentoring program for young girls. I am inspired and encouraged to be here because I want to see a new generation rise up. 